What's up guys? Is all this censorship bumming you guys out as much as it's bumming us out? Well, don't worry. We thought about it and we got you. We have extended cuts, uncut, raw versions of beers and breakdowns uploaded every Sunday starting this Sunday on the members only channel. So go to the website, thefngacademy.com, click tier three um, and sign up. It's a monthly subscription for 25 bucks a month. You get, uh, you'll now get uncut, uh, uncensored, raw beers and breakdowns and all the shenanigans in its, in its total glory and how it's supposed to be uh, without YouTube's all that sensory uh, and shenanigans that we have to do now. You also get some exclusive content as far as uh, selection goes. Kurt and I are going to start doing podcasts together on it um, and uploading those regularly as well, answering a lot of the questions that we get in the mentor program, which is the tier one, tier two, for all you people actually pursuing uh, special operations in some form so we could help mentor you, get your right mindset and all that stuff. But if you want to see these episodes uncensored, go check out tier three option at the fngacademy.com. And just know if you guys are a member, we thank you so much. You're helping us to move these products along and bring new products to the special operations community to help people get selected. So thank you for being part of that movement. We appreciate your support and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cause I made it. I understand that you said that last I time. I sent you one. You sent me a different one and then made a different one and then more. So yeah, none of us have place. the green one. What I sent you on Christmas. You sent me the black, you sent me a gray sweater. It's like that, but it's black. What it's was the sleeves pulled of? There was more. <laughs> <laughs> he put, like, oh, maybe it's a Kurt sent Abel a Christmas present and it was a sweatshirt and it was a cool sweatshirt. It's what he wanted. It's the FNG Academy sweatshirt. They're dope. You should check them out. The FNGacademy.com. <laughs> but in the military and special operations, some of the things that we attach to your equipment is cards. There's lots of. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you would be surprised in a team room, uh, SF, I also know I uh, did a school with some SEALs, they did the same thing. The amount of that you will find in an SF team room or a special operations team room. Yeah, it just is what it is. They're everywhere. We put a, one of our Bravos on our team had a, a guy with a huge dong stuck to his back in combat. <laughs> and the combat cameraman took a picture of him about to assault an objective with his gun up <laughs> in combat. And all you could see was his gun out of focus and then his back in focus with this guy with a giant. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, bro, you're about to get in a gunfight That's and you right. got a on your back. And all we could think about is the fact that you're walking around with a on your back. <laughs> <laughs> even it the cow can Yeah, even the cow can would just take a pictures of the, the card attached to his back. I imagine you're like in a stack doing some CQV, the most serious thing yeah. ever, but everybody's just like <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> uh, uh, so it's kind of a prank that we go. pull as you throw, it's you know. Funny. Who buys the cards? Did you buy the card? So Did you Amazon? All right, so, all right, so, so, that's actually, that's actually a good question. When I got to my team, I actually inherited the cards because they were, whoever was in charge of doing all the swag before me, it was another Charlie. He passed it down to me, and so I got the cards. But then when I got off the team, I, you know, let, or I, I passed them on to the next Charlie. So when I got back. You bequeathed them. I, I yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you, bequeathed the answer, the, you bequeathed the dick pics the down answer to the is next yes, person. I did have to go on Amazon and buy my own pack of cards, which are now almost gone, so I gotta buy some more <laughs> cards. Because anytime I send anything to any of my old team buddies or any of you guys, you're always getting dick cards or penis cards. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, speaking of, we're about to watch a movie on Navy SEALs. <laughs> so, strap in, boys and girls. Strap in, Take, strap on. Strap on, however you like it. Get pegged, get poked. <laughs> Who knows? Whatever floats your boat. It's all over here. It's all good here because we're watching Navy Seals with Charlie Sheen. Charlie Welcome Sheen. to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. This Andy, this one's for you. All right, guys. So we're going to jump into the first round of, I mean, <laughs> Navy Seals and see if this movie is any good. And I expect to find Andy Stump doing a seal reveal at any point. <laughs> In this movie. You can never discount that. He's gonna come out of some body of water. He's just gonna be popping up mm -hmm. when he's like. He's gonna come out of the like, I see you, Andy. Oh, we talk. We love you, Andy. All right, let's go. Marriage, children, 
children. Come what the f is, is he driving? Look at his hand. Look, those old Jeeps. <laughs> those old Jeeps, the front end's screwed, man. There's so much play in those. <laughs> Look at how much play And it's not moving. Bro, my guy is driving like this, bro. How hammered is he? Look, I believe it with that Jeep, man. Oh, that's gotta hurt so bad. And now you just reverse in, in the middle of the highway. So what's what's awesome about this and what's and what's intriguing, right, is you got uh, Dennis Hayworth, I think his name is. Who's that? The driver? The the Allstate guy. Yeah. So he almost follows. Have you ever heard of Kevin Holland, Master Sergeant Holland? He's the only guy that's ever served in both Dev Grew and CAG. Mm -mm. So he's he served in Dev Grew in the early '90s or in the yeah early '90s. Got out. And then once the uh, Afghanistan Iraq kicked off, he got back into the Army Reserves and wound up going CAG. So he served in both Tier One units. But so Dennis Hayberth, also in this movie, is a Dev Grew guy, and then goes on later to star in the Unit. Did you ever watch that yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Unit was dope. So he served in Dev Grew, and in CAG, and he also sold insurance. Nice. <laughs> I wonder if the Good actual operator ended up selling insurance. If he did, that would be bananas. That would be awesome. <laughs> I'll have to look that up and find out. <laughs> like, Yo, the unit, guy? the unit was dope, though. We should I do a reaction the to the unit. The unit was I awesome. I thought that was a good show. I thought it was a, I thought it was a little too heavy with the wife side of it. Yeah, but, I can see that. But also, and so later on, something happens, and I immediately think of a unit quote. And the next thing I know, they say the quote in the movie that they also said from the unit. So he took a part from this movie and put it into the oh, show. Ah, sick. We're very different on shows, though, because you yeah. think Terminal List is good. Well, I have a more refined palette for TV shows, and you like trash, so. Mm, that's fair. What's up, guys? This video is sponsored by 18 Alpha Fitness. If you haven't checked it out, and if you want to go special operations, you need a good fitness plan. Go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. He's a former Green Beret. He knows what he's doing. His post job from the military, from Special Forces, was helping uh, Air Force Special Operations get physically fit. This guy is on point, and he's a great dude. He could do custom plans and uh, just a common plan that I use, which is awesome, the kettlebell program. But I highly recommend you get a custom plan. You use code word BUCK, and he'll hook you up. Yo, tell me that wasn't a Ninja Turtles <laughs> in Real Man Tree. <laughs> All they needed is the smoke to drop. Dude, <laughs> I, that was the Foot Clan. How many times have I mentioned the Foot Clan? Does every military movie take after the Foot Clan in the Ninja uh, Turtles? That's so spot on. The Foot Clan, the clan. bro. <laughs> they come. <laughs> They come in, the music was the same. Yeah. It was like, two, 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 two. The guy dropped in from a ceiling yeah, light, yeah. from the roof, the ceiling. Bro, he dropped in from a skylight. This is around the same time as the original yes. Ninja Turtles, too. This is Ninja Turtles time. I'm telling you, they took oh. this whole clearing scene after the Ninja Turtles. Like, drop in all crazy, smoke everybody, and then high five Michelangelo, eat some pizza, <laughs> get out of there. That's exactly what happened in this oh, scene. Oh, man, I didn't think about that. This scene was a direct ripoff from Ninja Turtles. Speaking of Ninja Turtles, another ripoff from Ninja Turtles. On the plane over here, I was watching Samaritan. You, you seen that new sh the yeah. movie? Oh my god, that movie's so bad. I didn't watch it. I the, saw it on a plane. the only thing I saw was what's the main actor's name? Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone had a sledgehammer, hit the beam, hit the beam. The roof fell like on Shredder? the guys like Shredder, bro. <laughs> he shredded the movie. And guess what he did after the roof fell on stuck all the guys? Stuck his hand out. He stuck his oh, hand out. He stuck his like hand out. He stuck his hand out. Just like Shredder. <laughs> Yo, Sylvester Stallone in 2022 ripped off the Ninja Turtles. Uh, he hit the beams. It fell on the people. He stuck his hand out. If that's not a rip off of Ninja Turtles, I don't know what we is, need dude. To do that movie. I love that movie. I love that. Remember it was one the, of my favorites. They, they, he got the other ones that were mutated, and he's looking at them, and they're kids. And he's like, they're babies. <laughs> 
I love yes, that movie. Yes, I love it. My no joke, this actually happened. My mom came home one day, and uh, she was like, "I'm pregnant," and we're like, "Ah, oh, we don't have a dad, so that's weird." <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the story. You can end the story, right? <laughs> That's not the story. Okay. So she was like, what? she's like, what should we name her? It's going to be a girl. And I was like, Michelangelo. <laughs> and she was like, no. And I was like, Raphael? And she was like, no. And I was like, Donatello? And I went through get, all the Ninja did Turtles. You to April? And she's like, okay. No. Shenandra Aww. Kelsey. It has nothing to do with yeah, Ninja Turtles. April uh, Is that What's real? that? I'm alone, huh? All right, cool. Time for that. Okay. You have a what? No, we didn't hear you. How about a porn star named April O'Neil? Yeah. There's a porn star Is named April O'Neil? Uh, that's where she got her name from. Oh. It's just, okay. Moving on. Wow, April Rain. That's a weird fact that I don't even know <laughs> if it's real or not. Like, are you joking or are you telling the truth? Telling the truth. <laughs> Everybody watching at this point already knows. I love the music, dude. I yeah. love the music in these movies. This shit irritated me because, like, I get the assaulter team, but you have a random sniper by himself up on a crane that yeah. just happens to be on the objective, and then he just happens to have the line of sight when you need him, when yeah. you have Overwatch. And he didn't take it's, it. And he didn't take it automatically. And then it goes in later to where when they're trying to exfil, they have all kinds of people shooting at them. And what is the sniper oh, doing? He just repels down. He repels down and starts yeah. to leave. Like, bitch, that's why you're there. <laughs> to shoot them like, when nah, you're trying man. to exfil. Cabs are here. I'm he's like, the fuck out. <laughs> he's like, not me, guy. I got to go home. <laughs> <He's> like, <"Whoa, laughs> don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, bitch. <laughs> you didn't ask. I didn't tell. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Dude, uh, it's like that sniper was so useless. Like, if you're going to put up a sniper in a building complex like that, you have to understand that you only have one field of view. Right. And if those people, if that mission doesn't align with that field of view, your whole position is useless. Right, yeah. So to, hold, to have an overwatch position is ridiculous unless it's going to be a literal overwatch position where it's overhead circling yep. and they can move and follow you and then give you intel but having a, a set sniper in a position like that is completely ridiculous and you would never have a, anyone in the military and I, I shouldn't say never because it's probably happened but you would most of the time never most of the time not have a person by themselves right yeah he's gonna have a spotter or a spotter would. just somebody because what happens if somebody just happens to walk on his position right. And now he's by himself. You, and he's not he's even... by himself with a Barrett at that point. like he's, Yeah. The, <laughs> first of all, the Barrett is just a complete asinine weapon system. The whole point of that large caliber in a sniper system is to hit engine blocks and to stop vehicles. Well, they kind of use it for what it's made for in the next scene when he shoots through the wall. So that's kind of beneficial to have the Barrett for that. But the in like Afghanistan, we shot fifty cows at walls, mm -hmm. wouldn't puncture through. Really? Yep. Interesting. So an Afghan wall, shit you not. The the last okay, go to Instagram. The last picture I posted, uh, and you could see the guy actually firing the fifty cow. That's our JTAC. He was firing a fifty at a wall and a tree line, and the whole point of that was as the JTAC, he was about to lay down a building. And we wanted to get a clear view on the building to make sure, you know, no enemies were coming towards us. We could make sure that the, the building gets leveled. He wants eyes on the building he's about to level. Mm -hmm. So we're like, hey, we have a 50. Why don't you level that wall and the tree line that's getting in the way of our, our view? So he gets up on the 50, starts dumping it. Wall doesn't fall. It takes wow. all those 50 cal rounds. That's crazy. So that 50 is not going to punch through a wall most likely Maybe concrete, because obviously Afghans use 
Like a, yeah, like a mud. Like a mud construction like and, and possibly is stronger than concrete. Most likely is stronger than concrete. But this is concrete, so I get it's different material, but it's not as p powerful as you think. Well, the other point in this is also is that they see, he, he's like, oh, I have nothing on starlight, switching to thermal. And then he sees the people kind of behind the wall with thermal. But you're not going to see through a wall with thermal. It's not like a like, video me, game. Let me you, turn on my x-ray vision. Yeah. The video game like where you got the heartbeat sensor or yeah. something like that. It's like, oh, I see a heartbeat over there. I was You're like, not going to see that. I was like, hey, man, let me throw on my Call of Duty optics, and we're going <laughs> to shoot through this wall and kill this guy. So the whole Overwatch position, mm, nonsense. Yeah. Come on. But I get it. It looks cool. It was an awesome scene. The, fit, the Barrett blowing up the wall is a cool scene. If I was the advisor on this movie, would I change it? Nope. No. no. Nope. Absolutely. It's believable enough. It looks badass. I would 100% leave it. And like people like us, it's such a small community. Yes. I'm not going to worry about us. I'm going. No. I'm doing this for the masses. Right. They. Everybody. Well, a lot of people know what the Barrett is. It's mm -hmm. big, scary. Like everybody knows from Call of Duty, mm -hmm. and they know it's powerful. So. She told you that. I've never been told that. I've heard it once. I've heard it's small and unassuming. Someone said, "Oh, sh please tell me Kurt's on this one." Right? That's an MP5, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I say everything's MP5, but yeah, it looks like MP5 to me. At least the State Farm man's aiming. Say case of beautiful, beer. beautiful. Pause. So Charlie Sheen sees a, a bunch of canisters, doesn't really know what they are, throws a grenade at them, they explode. He goes, whoa, case of beer, Billy. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. You don't know. In special operations, it's hip fire, dude. You're you're winging it. Yeah. It's like, hey, this might blow up, and that could provide some cover and concealment so we can get the hell out of here. Yeah. I'm going to give it a shot. He wings it. He reacts to it. He doesn't, like, the whole stoic explosion yeah. thing. <gasps> I knew that was going to happen. Or, like, or you're like what, what's the cool guys don't look at explosions or something? Yeah. Or just, like, walking away. Yeah, come on. He was like, whoa, you go case of beer, dude. That's brilliant. That's yeah. SF guy. That's like, hey, dude, didn't know if that was going to work, but it did. Hell yeah. yeah. Case of beer. And that's funny because, like, in special operations, it's always the penalty or the reward is a case of beer. So if you're a new guy and you mess up or you mess up at anything, you're like, hey, that's a case of beer. Mm -hmm. If you do something good, like this guy says, like, hey, you owe me a case of beer, yeah. right? So Hell the yeah. case of beer is always, like, on the line Absolutely. All, at all times. So I love that. Charlie Sheen, again, coming in solid, wings it, doesn't know if it's going to work, shows his reaction that he is surprised that it worked, and what does he do? Call out for a case of beer. Yep. In the middle of a gunfight. In the That's middle awesome. of a gunfight. Love it. Most One of the most realistic uh, gunfight movies we've seen to date. I wish it was a Green Beret movie, but unfortunately, it's for the... <laughs> So first of all, that was dope. He did a muzzle. <laughs> he did a muzzle thump shot. Yeah. He said, <laughs> muzzle thump thump. Put a couple rounds in his chest. I mean, that was bad. Like the ultimate suppressed shot. Yeah, right? it was. It was so dope. He suppressed him with his own body. <laughs> so that was sick in of itself. Most people wouldn't even pay attention to that scene. It just yeah. looks like a muzzle thump. But he actually muzzle sh thumped him and then put rounds in his yeah, chest. That was pretty sick. That's dope. That's super sick. And if you're in a combat situation like that, 100%, that's the way to go. If you guys haven't seen the video we did with uh, Cody Donovan, his UFC coach, we're actually working a system out to for wall fighting, transitioning it from the UFC with these heavy hitters, killers on the mats into special operations. And that's one thing we're trying to get away from is what if it's a non-combatant? You can't just muzzle thump him. You can't just teep kick him. Uh, you can't just apply violence to everyone. Sometimes you have to subdue the situation. You have to control them. So um, believe it or not, the current TTPs for special operations is if someone is non-compliant, when you tell them to get on the ground, 
The answer is to hurt them. You're going to teep kick them in the chest. You're going to muzzle thump them in the chest. If, they t- if I tell you to get on the ground and you don't comply, you're getting hurt. Unfortunately, that doesn't cross a lot of boundaries. So that may work in Afghanistan when we have, you know, uh, hard lines in combatant, non-combatant. Mm-hmm. But that's yep. definitely not going to apply when it comes to a SWAT team in the U.S. with their own citizens. So we're trying to bridge that gap with the system with Cody um, and it's the wall fighting, and it's a way to really control someone, put a lot of pressure on them, really control their limbs so they can't reach for secondary, tertiary weapon systems. So make sure you go check out that video. It's awesome. Um, and we're going to be doing a ton of work with Cody on that and making sure that operators and SWAT teams are able to use that wall fighting system, transition from the UFC for operators. It's going to be sick. That video is at over 100,000 views, which just goes to show how much this system is actually needed. Yeah, that's pretty sick. We've had SWAT teams already reach out to us uh, asking for the curriculum. Trust me, guys, we're working on it. We will have that for you. Uh, Cody is putting it in practice. Did you see the last fight his guy just did? No, I didn't. It was on Saturday night, and he used Cody's exactly from the video he showed me. He used it in the wall fighting in the cage, and it was brilliant. The guy couldn't even think because his head was just being smashed left and right with Cody's system of controlling his head with the top. It was brilliant. It was the perfect setup. But also for the people that really aren't interested in learning that, if they watch that video, they get to see you get beat up (laughs) with Cody when he slams you into the wall. Dude, it was brutal. (laughs) Just see it on your face. I hated my life, dude. The comments on that video, everybody loves just seeing you go through the pain in that video. It was brutal. It hurt so bad that when he was like, all right, we're done. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm so done getting my butt kicked, dude. I was like, I'm glad that's not me. <laughs> oh, it hurt so bad. <laughs> that's a d- move. Once again, he was winging it. Yeah. He found these munitions. He wanted to get rid of them. He threw a grenade on them. He looked back, didn't blow. Yeah, no sh- <laughs> It's But that's how it goes, dude. But it's still a dick move. Give me a warning. Don't look yeah. at me and be like, ha <laughs> Yeah. Like uh, the time that my Charlie decided to throw a grenade over the wall and didn't tell me. <laughs> I've told you that story before. Have we used that one yet? Yeah. Probably, All right, so... We're in a gunfight. We go up to this wall. We, th- we had the guys pinned down. We already shot at them. We thought they were dead. We tried to, it's a corner of a wall of a clock. So we go to clear the, the corner and our dog guy and everyone starts getting lit up. So we run after them and we, we stack on the wall and we're about to assault them. And we start taking a bunch of contact. So I try to like take cover and I'm like laying in this shallow little ditch. Mm-hmm. And I look up and my Charlie, our, our senior Charlie, um, still in by the way, I think he's E8 now, but he pulls the pin on a grenade. So I'm watching him under nods. This is in the middle of the night. We know we have enemy content. We're getting our asses shot at like crazy. Uh, the dog almost got killed. The dog handler almost got killed because we thought we laid him down and we were wrong. They survived. And I'm looking at him, and, I'm, and I see a door over here, so I'm really hyper-focused on this door because I don't know if they're going to come from this corner or if they're going to open the door and start shooting at us from here. So I have my gun trained on the door because I was like, these guys have this corner. If they pop open here, I'm f- emptying them. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at the door, and I'm in the hole, and I look up, and he's got a grenade. And I was like, all right, he's going to throw a grenade. That's dope. That's dope. And he pulls the pin, and I was like, all right, that's dope. Got to throw it. Go throw it. Go throw it. And I see he pops it, and the the spoon comes off. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys know this, but once the spoon comes off, you got not exactly <laughs> three and a half seconds. You got anywhere from two and a half to three and a half seconds, which may sound like a, a big gap to some people, but that's a really small gap. <laughs> So we don't You're know what it is. We're dealing with a grenade. We're yeah. dealing with a grenade. So he lets that spoon fly. It's old Jer Bear. He's cooking it. He's cooking that grenade. I've never, in all the times I've seen people throw a grenade in that deployment, I've never seen anyone cook a grenade before. Never. It's usually that fear gets you, that little bit of, nah, 
and you just launch that. You yeah. know, you pop, pull the pin, and you're like, ah, I'm good, and you just send it. But when that grenade is on that long side of the three and a half seconds, that's a long time mm -hmm. in hindsight to have a grenade sitting on the other side of the wall, and that's plenty of time if someone's there to get it back at you. Yeah. So old Jerry Bear has been around a few times. This, I'm pretty sure at this point it's like a sixth deployment. So I'm going to focus on the door. I look up, and old Jerry Bear lets that spoon fly. And my heart starts pounding, bro, because I'm like, <laughs> this dude's still holding on to that grenade. He's standing and, right above yeah, you. Yeah, and he's standing right <laughs> above me. So I'm looking at the door. Old Jerry Bear standing right here, and the spoon flies this way. I'm trying to look at the door, but I can't anymore at this point. I'm too scared. <laughs> And he's looking at, he's holding a grenade. I was like, what's he gonna do? I was like, throw it, throw it, throw it. And all of a sudden he steps up and does a jump. And this Kobe Bryant motherfucker decides that he's gonna lay up the grenade over oh. the wall after he's been cooking it for like a full second. So he lays it up and he's not tall enough because the, the wall's like eight feet tall. The grenade just, and I know I've told this story before, but this is one of the scariest moments of my life. The grenade just goes like this. And I'm watching it go to the wall, and it doesn't have a lot of height. It's not going fully over the wall. It's going to barely clear the wall. And I'm scared out of my mind because if this hits and comes back, oh, me and Jer Bear are going to Jesus. <laughs> like, that's a wrap. There's no surviving this. Hello, Jesus. Yeah, I was like, oh, like one minute I'm in a gunfight, the next minute I'm hanging out with Jesus. You know, that's, what it's, that's all there is to it. And the grenade literally goes, shoop. Oh, boom. And I'm like, oh, oh. dude, it was terrifying. Jeez. And then uh, our Delta, I don't want to say his name because he's in CAG now, but he throw he, he again, he throws a grenade. It goes up because it's the corner of the wall. He throws a grenade, hits a tree, comes back on our side, but it's further over by the corner, not where me and Jerry Bear are, blows up. Jerry takes a, uh, <laughs> a shrapnel to the leg. Like, all because these guys uh, are like, we can't get them down, you know? And then we got ourselves in this bad so spot. So you guys are separated by, like, a foot and a half just by a wall, and you guys are, are fighting? Yeah. Jeez. And we got video. If you haven't seen it, go to YouTube. One of the earliest videos I posted of the Reacts. I'm back-to-back. -back. Me and my teammates, uh, Travi, uh, my team sergeant, I'm back-to-back. -back. I'm a foot and a half away from the enemy. We're in a gunfight two feet from each other that's wild it it was terrifying and so when people tell you like oh would it be in a good place i signed up to see combat shut your yeah. mouth you don't know because when someone's shooting you in the back from two feet away with ak-47 and it's exploding on your back and the only thing that's saving you is the magical concoction of a wall <laughs> that afghans make with <laughs> god knows what inside that mixture it's the worst experience of your life. And I took off running, and all of a sudden the, the floor starts exploding with rounds, and I'm just waiting for it to hit me in the back. And somehow, me and Travi round the corner unscathed. Jeez. And we're looking at each other like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> like, how are we doing this? And then I rounded, and I'm looking at the, waiting for the guy to be chasing me, because it felt like he was chasing me with his bullets. I'm waiting for him to be chasing me, <clears throat> And I'm looking at him, trying to shoot back, and my team sergeant, because he stayed back to let us come back. Ooh. So my team sergeant's right in my crosshairs, and I'm like, and so he's getting shot at, and then finally I feel like I can get a shot, and I start taking shots, and I didn't see the video till after, but you could see him take a knee and start, and he's just ripping him down, and he's ripping him at all of us and almost killing all of us. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the wall starts exploding, and I'm pretty sure it's either from my return fire or Afghan, the commandos return fire, but the wall starts exploding, and then finally he decides to take off running. Jeez. Dude, it, it was bananas. It, Wild. Uh, it's it like what a comment to say like this guy just went through one of the most harrowing experiences in his life almost died and he's like thank you and he's like no need to thank us we don't exist this never happened he's like this shit did happen my homie just got his head blown off yeah <laughs>
can happen. Not only that, but the his line was that like cringy, cheesy bullshit. Yeah, that yeah. we hate to watch. He's like, oh, we're a super clandestine shadow yeah. unit. We don't exist. Like, but then the reality of the cool, the operator, what he, an operator would say is, you welcome, bro. Yeah, exactly. That, it, Charlie Sheen, saving yeah. the f***ing day <laughs> from this corny ass cheesy. And also. You don't have to thank us. We don't exist. <laughs> we never were here. You never saw us. You use all these words. Just say, you're welcome. Yeah, like. Over. If you guys are ever wondering why, if if I ever talk smack on a movie and I'm like, this is cringy, it's that kind of cringy line to where it's said like, it, he sounded like uh, Keanu Reeves yeah. to me, where it's just like... Point break. Yeah, no emotion, no feeling whatsoever, just, just a line in a script. And then Charlie Sheen comes in and saves him and goes, you're welcome. And it's like, all right, we're back, we're back. That was, that was you something know. Rob O'Neill would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't exist. We don't exist. That corny, cheesy, I'm a cool guy operator. I don't care how cool you are, man. It's just some guys are just, to me, just, yeah. Once you meet enough, like, tier one guys, you're like, you guys are just normal. You're just another group of dudes. I remember the first time I met a tier one guy, I was like, oh, that's a, a tier one guy. Yeah. And after a while, you're like, you're just the same as us. Yeah. <laughs> you you get same cold thing. like we do. You get hot like we do. You you. Bitch and complain the same as us. Everything is the same. Sometimes you just get cooler gear than we got or cooler missions. At the end of the day, guys, you got to stop putting people on a pedestal. Right. Whether it's special forces, we're two special forces, prior special forces guys, don't put us on a pedestal. We're just dudes. Exactly. We're infantry guys, special forces, tier one CAG. We've all just done some some cool stuff if we got lucky. Some of us signed up for tier one and and didn't get cool missions yeah and don't have the cool guys stories don't put us on pedestals there's, we're just dudes there's not much that separates no all of those regular infantry uh sf tier one there's not much it's right. just whatever you signed up for and got selected for yeah the cards like, fell in your favor exactly. you happened to sign up you went to selection everything fell in your favor to where you got selected i went to ranger selection and got hurt so you're telling me that I'm not good enough to be a ranger? I'm not strong enough, fast enough, equipped enough? No, I just got hurt. It wasn't in my cards at the time. I went back, got special forces without getting hurt, made it through. So it happened to be in my cards that time. But that doesn't separate any people from each other. So if we can get anything out of this, it's stop putting people on a pedestal. I wish I could get those Reeboks. The, the dude in the, the blue shorts with his hand on his <laughs> looks like every Delta yeah. ever on any ODA ever. That's oh, your delta right that's there. That's exactly it. That's, that's so what you got. True, that's, that's your delta. Wow. That's that's his whole life aspirations is to be playing golf with his hand on his dick in public drinking a beer. Deltas have a type, and yeah, it's they one do. One of the few like where you can look at a team and be like, Delta, you're a, you're, you're the, delta. the delta, and he's like, Nah, bro. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And that's it. That's it right there. So this is a, again what I love about this movie is the accuracy. They tell him, Hey, go get some time off. What do they do? They go drinking and golfing together. Just, yeah, just, they're just together. Two dudes having a good time. What did we do in North Carolina? Drinking and golfing together. Nice. <laughs> that was an awesome time, too. One of our best friends and teammate and everything, I love him, Tom, was getting married. What did we do? We went to Top Golf, yep. got wasted. We did this, except for instead of golf carts, it was like lime scooters. Yeah. <laughs> And then after, we got on lime scooters and <laughs> smashed around on them the same way that they did the golf carts. It was so much fun. Until Tom's brother was puking in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> like going in parking garages, ramping lime scooters, yeah. and the next thing you know. <laughs> Tom's brother's puking in a bush, and then Tom starts puking in the other bush. It's like, you guys are definitely brothers. Yeah, it's like, like, hey, bro, time to puke. <laughs> they're on the same puke schedule. <laughs> but this is how we do. 
that you have to build that camaraderie so mm -hmm. that way if you can party together and love each other in the in the best of times then you got to look out for each other in the worst of times so this movie it just gets so much right of the camaraderie and the backstory of being an sf guy mm -hmm. like how many people on that golf course mm -hmm. are shirtless with uh swim trunks and their hands on the Drinking a beer. They're all getting stared at by yeah. everybody else. Everyone's looking at them. Everyone's thinking they're a bunch of douchebag yahoos, but they know that they're there for a reason, right. and it's it's to be different. It's to support each other and to do cool things in every environment. Yep. So that way, when it hits the fan, hey man, I'm just looking out for my bro the same way I did on that golf course when I was trying to, you know, hide him from the police. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we're trying to get away with drinking beers. Is the same way I'm trying to hide him in a gunfight. Plug his wounds if he gets shot, pull him in a good situation, have his back, run to him under cover or mm -hmm. under fire. This movie is... It's awesome. Um, it's awesome. It's so immaculate in how it portrays being an SF guy. Yeah, it's very nostalgic as far as like yeah. watching it and be like, oh, I miss those days, you know? I miss it. This makes me miss it more than most... Like these scenes more so than like the than, war scenes. Yeah, yeah, than doing anything mm -hmm. else. It's these scenes. Yeah, because we all get this. Yeah. You may get deployed on a J set to go to Nepal. You may get to Afghanistan. You may have to go to uh, all different kinds of countries. But everybody gets this part. Mm -hmm. And this is the part that makes a team. Whatever your mission is, it doesn't matter. You're going to go do it as these guys that are bonded in these kind of moments. Yeah. People think too much that war is what bonds people. But trust me, you could bond over some brewskis and a couple <laughs> bar fights just as much as you could bond in war. Kill house. <laughs> Use it for CQB. Close quarters battle. This guy's so cheesy. Did he fund this movie? Why is he the lead actor? It is. It, it is. is. Kiss me. His face. Oh! Oh, look at <laughs> What a terrible way to try and get laid. I know. Oh, you mean she didn't like that? <laughs> like, oh, that works every time. Yeah, that, boy, that was my main pussy getter right there, baby. Are you good officers, man? <laughs> Dude, what a jackass. This guy is the worst actor of this entire movie. I don't I, yeah, understand I don't how understand. he's the lead character. I don't understand. His, yeah, I don't get his character. I don't get why he was cast there. He's like Dan Brazilian in, uh, <laughs> in uh, Lone, Lone Survivor. Survivor. But you know like, what? Maybe they needed him so that Charlie Sheen could be the complete polar opposite. Dude, Charlie Sheen just shines and carries this whole movie. And this guy is like... As, as good as Charlie Sheen's trying to carry it, this guy's trying to drag it back down with this corny... <laughs> he is the epitome of act of valor. Oh, yeah, yeah. He is... Every actor in act of valor is this guy... <laughs> <laughs> like, Close quarters battle. <laughs> Close quarters battle. I just learned that term this morning. Send it, boys. Oh. <laughs> I've got her. Yeah, one day I actually showed up to a night shoot with no night vision capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> I was brand new to the team, and we're like, oh, we got a night shoot? And I was like, okay, I show up. And I'm like, <laughs> they're like, where's your nods? I was like, oh, my nods? Oh, no, that's what it is. I was like, oh, here's my nods. They're like, all right, put them on. And I look at my helmet, and I look at my nods, and I'm like, I'm missing something. <laughs> I didn't have the mount that they go on. And I was like, oh, f I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> so my senior got chewed out, so then it came down to me. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I never did it again. Man, I, fucking, see, I learned. We don't just call the people out. We're calling ourselves out. <laughs> Look, new guys do dumb things, New right? guys do dumb shit. <laughs> all right so two things one 
Proof that every Navy SEAL on the planet hopes and wishes someone will come into their bar talking sh <laughs> Two, that every Navy SEAL is <laughs> That's Charlie Sheen. You better go wash your face off. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, some hard stuff. if you guys don't know, there are Navy SEAL bars. When I've been to them on accident, <laughs> trust me, I wasn't looking for it. But there are Navy SEAL bars. And how do you know? Oh, that's all right. They'll make sure that you know. There's, they put their little trident symbol into the bar. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. The tridents are everywhere. <laughs> I remember sitting at a bar, and I just graduated. I'm a new Green Beret. I'm all full of <laughs> cum and vinegar and just... <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, he's going to hit it? Is he going to say it? What's he going to say? <laughs> piss and vinegar. I'm, I'm all full of piss and vinegar. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to rock, dude. And then I look down at the bar, and I feel some eyes kind of staring at me. And I think, what was it? Where were we at? I can't remember where we were at. I think we might have been at free fall school. Either way, all just hyped up, ready to go. I got a couple buddies with me. We're good. I look down, at, I feel some eyes like kind of eyeballing me i look down at the bar and sure enough there's a trident that's built into the bar it's like <laughs> encased into the bar itself and i was like all right <laughs> here we go there are seal bars yeah. where the seals frequent and they they know it's their place it's their bar that they're all at and they are praying that some big yoked up dickhead comes in and starts wanting to fight them why so they can kiss them on the mouth so they could <laughs> so they could tag team whoop their ass and then tag team <laughs> lick their ass <laughs> either or they're gonna whoop or lick your ass <laughs> in that bar take, so, your, take your pick choice is yours <laughs> yeah, boy choice is yours baby you like, gonna oh no leg. <laughs> yeah <laughs> So if you walk into a bar and you see a bunch of hungry men staring at you and a sealed trident stamped into the bar or on the back of the bar, just know you got a choice. Get your ass licked or kicked because one of the two is going to happen, if not both. So I wish I would have known. I went to, there's a bar in Pattaya, Thailand called the Tahitian Queen. And saying, like, we walk in. Tahitian Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a seal bar. <laughs> well, we, we walk in, and there's, like, at the back part, there's team stickers everywhere. It's like, oh, we're going to put our sticker up. And we start looking at the stickers, and probably three-quarters of them were all seal stickers. Yeah. Like, all different seal teams. And there's a, a few ODA stickers that you can find in there, so we put ours up. But you could you could tell very much, like, this is a seal bar. This is where all yeah. the seals go, because they're always in Thailand also. So it was this, the same way. I didn't get licked or kicked that night, but uh, I'm Could sure you, if I was there a little bit longer, it might have happened. We because, didn't stay there that long either. Because what happened was, the more you f around, no. the more you find out. <laughs> That's true. That we started our night there. We started the night there, and it was all of yeah, us. Yeah, see? So I'm sure if it was just like one or two of us and they could pick us apart, then it would know, be different. We'd see, probably find out a lot more. You didn't want to find out, yeah. so you didn't f around you fuck around now. all right so you got out that's a good side of the graph then you don't get licked or kicked but if you want to find out and fuck around at the same time well, pff, it's you have a choice to make and son. It, it's a fine line too because yeah. you're finding out or you're fucking around and you're just having a good time but, but you don't even know where that line is all of a yeah. sudden you fucked around too much and then you gotta find out you're gonna find you out you gotta pay the price you gotta pay the price <laughs> you're gonna get a, a tongue or a boot right up your ass and you don't even know which one it's going to be. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, at the beginning of the night. Imagine wanting know, a tongue and getting a boot or wanting a boot and getting a tongue. That's oh, going to be yeah. an awkward situation. You might not even get a choice. You, you might. You get that's both. what I'm saying. Oh, damn. You f***ed around too much. Yeah. You found out too much. <laughs> you found out too much. You don't want the tongue and the boot. You're like, oh, Charlie's here. <laughs> Charlie Sheen walks in and you're like, oh, no. Like, come on, bro. You know that every operator. Dude, okay, story time. I'm sorry. I got to divert just a little bit. So, our Delta, we're in a bar. Where are you going? No. We're in a bar in Texas. We're on training. I think I've told the story before, but we're all hammered in this bar. Our Delta, drunk. He's in CAG now. Cool dude. Hey, what's up, bro? Love you. Guy walks up. He's got the 
tattoos of the clown on his face. Oh, like over the eyes? Over the eyes, yeah. yeah. And then he's got the smile, too. Tattooed on his face? Tattooed on his face. So the full clown look like this. I can only guess that his nickname is Joker. (laughs) Probably. I'm going to take a a shot in the dark (laughs) that his nickname is Joker. Hey, Joker. So he walks up to our Delta and apparently reaches out his arm. It reached out his hand. I didn't see this part. It has Coke in it. So I look over, and all I see is T. I'll call him T. Slap the dog out of this out of Joker's hand. What? Pow! Oh. <laughs> and then walk outside immediately with Joker. Oh no! So I say, here we go. <laughs> Time to go. And so we go outside. Travi's there. Mind you, Travi was pro football player. Jeez. So he's like, he's like 6'2", 280, massive human being. It's a whole ODA that are, are hot about to go to Afghanistan. So we are just fired up. Yeah, ready to go. And we completely make a circle around Joker. <laughs> so inside our little circle out, outside of the bar, we have a complete circle of people just ready to destroy yeah, anyone. pack of dogs at that point. Yeah, we're ravaged wolves at this point. And inside that circle is T and Joker. And Joker, which is probably used to be in the alpha male in most situations, <laughs> is completely standing there looking around at us. I imagine mostly looking at Travi and being like, oh, hell no. <laughs> he doesn't say a word. He's just a uh, 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 uh. And somebody was like, anyway, light him up, walk away. (laughs) As we're walking away, we're like, T, what happened, bro? And he's like, bro, he tried to sell me Coke. As soon as I saw a Coke in his hand, I slapped the shit out of his hand, told him I don't do drugs, (laughs) (laughs) motherfucker. This is a PSA. Dude, they said just say no. (laughs) So old T Dog decides that he's gonna be like <laughs> <laughs> the f- ride his high horse about dope, and he was the most offended that old Joker would come up and offer some coke. He was so offended that he decided to slap that sh- out of his hands, probably to save the future of the youth <laughs> in old oh. Pocadoke, Texas, wherever like the hell Mr. we were. T, at. I pity the fool that <laughs> does drugs. So he takes, he slaps the. Sh- out of this gangster and slaps his coke all over the floor his oh, little balloons of no. coke but luckily the the dude either didn't have a gun or decided not to pull it out on all of us yeah. we left in a squad like just mobbing the streets of huh. downtown of texas dude Jeez. Yo, tell me that wasn't the coolest execution scene ever. That's sick. Bro, he took him down and swam his ass down into the water. Swam him to death. To death. (laughs) And then for some reason just cut his throat. But I think it would just be cool to just let him drown, knowing that if you could hold your breath for three minutes, like what are the odds that he could do the same? Turn around and look into his eyes. And just with his eyes open still and then just push him away. (laughs) And then he just floats away and then you swim to the top. That would have been that money. Been I think the knife scene was kind of lame. Well, that and there was no blood either. Yeah. He cut his throat and nothing came out. I think they wanted to make it like less gory, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But I mean, you yeah. already got the guy underwater. And yeah. You swim him. Throat. I think the sickest way would have been swim him all the way down, look him in the eyes, and then his eyes just glass over, and then you just push away and he floats away, and then you swim back up. That would have been fucking dope because you train to hold your breath for two plus minutes. <laughs> Most people can't do that. It's a reasonable bet that you could watch him drown and still be good to go. You know, you're not gonna want to hear this, but you just described a scene from Jack or from uh, what's the show you hate? Uh, Terminalist. Terminalist. You just described a scene from Terminalist. Does he swim him down and drown him? Well, he, the car crashes and oh. goes off the bridge. Wait, what movie was that? 
Without Remorse? Yeah, that's what it was. Without Remorse, Michael B. Jordan, remember? Yeah, well, I like Michael yeah, B. Jordan. Yeah, that was awesome. That was and awesome. And I like Without Remorse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that that's was pretty sick. sick. It's dope. Yeah. So he, he, they were, Without Remorse probably saw this and was like, ah, we could do it a little better. Yeah. And like, you're, you're a SEAL. That's what you're trained to you're do. You're trained to swim, hold right? your breath. So. so, all right, guys, we hope you liked that episode of Beers and Breakdowns. We approve. That was an awesome movie. Hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Is that not good? Is that not I mean what? Say bye. Bye. bye.